When you think about the worst food in theme parks, you probably think about churros, pretzels, turkey legs, or Uncle Drew's belly filling pork sandwich. Okay, you actually probably don't think about that last one, but that is exactly what Sammy D was thinking about when he wrote this one star review. And that is just one of the hundreds of one star reviews that I found here at Universal Studios Florida. So today I'm gonna try the worst restaurants in this park. I'm hungry, but I'm not excited. Let's go. It rained. Welcome to Florida. So the first restaurant I'm gonna eat at is right here. This is Mel's Drive-In. It's like a retro 1950s style diner. Apparently it was made famous in a movie called American Graffiti in the 1970s. During Universal's Halloween event, Halloween Horror Nights, this turns into Mel's Die-In, uh, which is why I'm wearing the Halloween Horror Nights shirt. It's actually not, that is just pure coincidence. It was laundry day and this is what I had. Honestly, I don't know too much about Mel's or any of the movies or anything like that. All I do know is that it had a lot of concerning reviews. Let's start with a detailed one, shall we? Lucan said, sucks. Okay, Gary actually did have more to say. Gary said, hands down rock bottom garbage. Disgusting and disgraceful. If this is a lease, Universal should revoke the contract. If this is Universal's restaurant, they should be ashamed. Burn it and start over. Gary, that was kind of harsh, but at least it's not confusing like this next one, but I guess that's because I'm not a Northern Midwesterner. Y'all get it in a second. Reagan said, Ufta, this is a rough one. You know it's bad when I got a breakout and Ufta, my Northern Midwesterners will understand. What's Ufta? Like if I have anyone here watching that is a Northern Midwesterner, what's Ufta? Cody K said, the retro feel of this restaurant was charming, but wasn't the only thing that was retro. Food tasted like it was straight from the 1950s, and I don't mean the taste. It was so cold, I think it was served to some great granddad named Sylvester in 1952 and is now being served to me. Sylvester is a great name. I, um, I've never had the honor of knowing anybody personally named Sylvester. I, I, I knew a cat named Sylvester, and I'm not talking about the cartoon. I, uh, I had a friend who had a cat named Sylvester and then an orange cat named Mitch. Valerie may have the most critical of all the reviews for males. Valerie said, this place may be at the top of my list of grossest food I've ever tasted. I managed to eat about three full bites of my burger until I just couldn't take anymore. The cheese wasn't even slightly melted and the onion rings were so tasteless. Way overpriced and disgusting food. Wish I had gone with a pretzel from a kiosk for lunch instead. What's funny is when you're looking at the negative reviews, most of the reviews are kind of the same. They've got the same sentiment as far as the burgers not being very good. And considering Mel's is like a retro diner and they literally have a sign that says hamburgers on the outside, I would hope that the hamburgers would be a little bit better, but I guess that's what we're here to find out. I don't know if y'all saw the disaster at the end of that clip, but I ran into a chair and about fell. That one right there, I knocked it over. The people sitting back there eating, they laughed at me. Anyways, the burger looks good. I ordered the Mel's famous burger because that's what they're famous for is apparently this burger and then bad burgers on Yelp. If you look there, uh, I also got onion rings because that's one of the things I have to test. I don't have anything to drink, I'll be right back. I love onion rings, so I'm gonna start with that because apparently they're tasteless. Some of the best onion rings that I've ever had anywhere are Dairy Queens. I don't know why Dairy Queen's supposed to be good at ice cream, but their onion rings are so good. I'm not a Sonic person. Like a lot of people love Sonic's onion rings. They're too sweet. Got that little sweet hint. I don't like these, but these, these are more Dairy Queen than they are Sonic. The review was also concerned about the cheese being melted. Cheese is melted. Cheese is melted. But now I guess the only thing left to do is to try this famous or potentially infamous burger. Listen, is it the best burger I've ever had? No, 
Is it a burger you should be infamous for? No. Is it a burger you should be famous for? Also, probably not. It's just a standard solid burger, but definitely not a one-star burger. Whoever said that this food tastes like it's from the 1950s has apparently never looked at the dishes that were popular in the 1950s. I mean, they were eating stuff like tuna noodle casserole, ham and jello salad, chicken pot pie. Okay, actually, chicken pot pie kind of slaps. Like, I love chicken pot pie. So if you didn't see the last video, the way that we did this is we wanted to give every place an accolade. Like, everybody deserves an award, so we wanted to give accolades to all the places. Uh, it's like a participation trophy for restaurants. Mel's Drive-In, most likely place to satisfy Sylvester. As much as I'm enjoying the atmosphere and the music in here, it is time to go somewhere where they don't allow Jello salad. Unfortunately, it rained again. Oh my God, the chair is so wet. I just flung that all over my bag. So in case it wasn't obvious from all the water and me getting wet and soaking my backpack, it rained again and it rained really hard for a really long time. Um, so this is probably the last restaurant I'll get to eat at today, but I'll just have to come back tomorrow to finish the video, uh, which isn't that exciting because there is a restaurant that I am not excited about eating at tomorrow because it is rated so much lower than everything else in this park. So behind me, I have Louie's Bar and Grill. It's just like the neighborhood pizza place. Every theme park has to have a pizza place. And so, unfortunately, this one is one of the lowest rated restaurants in the park. Full transparency, I have always enjoyed the pizza at Louie's. Um, even though some of these reviews make me question myself just a little bit. So Chelsea left one of my favorite reviews that I have ever heard. The worst, worst, worst service and food I think I've ever had. Came to HHN, waited about 30 minutes just to have cold pizza, cold pasta, and chicken that literally choked me from how dry it was. If you are at the verge of passing out hungry, pass out. It's cheaper and better for you. They told us they ran out of cups so we couldn't get drinks, but we could buy souvenir cups. <laughs> Chelsea really said to just pass out because it was cheaper and more enjoyable. JC said, I've had better skull pizza. I agree, but skull pizza is delicious. Do you remember the little, like the rectangles that you would get at school? I used to love those, like Thursdays. I think Thursdays were my school day pizza, my pizza day at school or whatever. I, I love those. I've tried to make Chef Bardee pizzas because you can put those in a square pan. It's just not the same. Jack Dip, <laughs> that's a fun name said overpriced microwavable pizza, $60 for four slices and two drinks. Jumbo slices are smaller than regular slices. I have had the pizza here several times and never have I thought that the slices were, were small, but it's been a while since I've eaten here, so I guess we'll see. Ramiro said, everything in this restaurant is insipid. The food is average, but the prices are the same than other restaurants in the parks. I actually picked this one because I have no idea what insipid means, and I love learning new words. Insipid, lacking flavor, mugs of insipid coffee. It's a good descriptor. Can I do a chicken Caesar salad, a jumbo slice of pepperoni pizza, and do y'all? Do y'all have jello salad? <laughs> okay, no, it's fine, it's fine. This all looks great, first and foremost. I got a soda, they had cups, they didn't even try to upsell me on a freestyle cup, although they should have, because I have the largest collection of freestyle cups in the world, probably. Also, we can go ahead and debunk that this is smaller than a normal slice of pizza. Like this is, if this is a normal slice of pizza, it's the one that everybody fights over when you order pizza. I'll be honest, for Louis, the times that I've eaten here, this is smaller than what I'm used to, but um, yeah, this is like, it's a big piece of pizza. Mm. 
I'm being really quiet because I'm like one of the only people in here and they're about to close. But I didn't see just chicken on the menu, so I got a chicken Caesar salad, which also, after eating a burger and pizza, just seemed like the right choice. This is the chicken in question that is supposedly so dry that I will choke and that I should just pass out instead of eating it. Slightly nervous. <coughs> just kidding. It's, it's not dry, it's just chicken. It's chicken that you would put on a Caesar salad, which actually makes a lot of sense in this case, since it's on a Caesar salad. Uh, I would definitely not rather pass out, even though I do love, I do love me some sleep. I would definitely rather eat this if I was hungry. Crouton crunch check. So you can probably tell it's really dark. Um, they were closing Louis and I didn't want to hold them up from closing. And then the nighttime, the sensational show, the Lagoon show is about to start up. So they've turned off all the lights here in New York. I mean, like completely dark. When I sat down, there were lights, the beacon of light and the beacon of hope that is Starbucks. Uh, the inside of Starbucks is lighting me up and that's the only reason that y'all can see me right now. But I guess I should say, Louis was enjoyable as always. I've never had a problem with it. Actually, when I saw that it was one of the lowest rated restaurants here, it kind of shocked me. Um, it was like a 3.8 or a 3.9, so it's not really that low, but it still shocked me. Okay, the lights are going crazy because of the show. I guess I should give Louis their accolades and their review, uh, and then I'm actually gonna watch the show tonight, which has already started, but that's okay. Uh, and then I'll snap to tomorrow, and it'll be like, I never left. It'll just be daylight. Louis, the most likely place to not have jello salad. See y'all tomorrow. Boom, transition. Um, yeah, it is so hot today. I walked outside this morning, like walked the dogs. Instant regret. Uh, it is just, it's blazing hot. I don't know if you can see how shiny I am right now. That's sweat. It's not a skincare routine. Like that is just pure sweat. Luckily, I haven't eaten a day and I woke up this morning just craving the worst reviewed restaurants. So we're back. Let's go to San Francisco. So behind me, right here, this is Lombard's. It's like the seafood restaurant here at Universal. It's one of two full service restaurants. I believe that's right. I should know better. It's two, there's only two full service restaurants. Hold on. Like I was saying, definitely only two full service restaurants. So it's here in Finnegan's. So I was kind of shocked when I saw that one of them was one of the worst rated restaurants at this park. With that being said, I actually don't have a lot of experience here. I have been here a few times in the past, but not enough to have like a real solid opinion here. It's just normally when I'm here, I'm just wanting to do things quickly. And so I go to a quick service and not full service. But yeah, some of the reviews, people have opinions. Opinions like Jamie's. Jamie said, Two words, garbage. Uh, Heath actually decided to use a few more words to describe his experience. He said, we're annual pass holders, so we're super fans of Universal Studios. This was one of our favorite spots, not anymore. Ordered my usual fisherman's basket, literally came with two shrimp, an extremely small piece of very fishy cod, five small claims, Eight of the smallest scallops I've ever seen, less than one quarter inch in size. If I had put all eight together, they would have made two sea scallops. I did, however, get 50 frozen french fries. Horrible experience. It's truly sad what's happened to the parks. I'll be honest, a quarter of an inch does seem kind of small, but I have no reference for how big sea scallops are supposed to be. Uh, 50 fries, though, that seems like a lot. I've never counted how many fries I've gotten, like when I've ordered fries anywhere. Am I really gonna? <laughs> Today's the day. Uh, yeah, I'll count the fries. Oh, why are you counting fries? Oh, it's my new hobby. Robbie said, absolute worst steak I've ever had. Tough doesn't describe it. 
do not buy the $47 bone-in ribeye. It's terrible. So I can say on top of not counting my french fries, I have also never bought a steak in a theme park. So today is a day of first, I guess. And finally, we get to Erica. Erica said, the absolute worst meal I've had in a long time. My boyfriend and I both agree the french fries were the quest french fries we've ever had from anywhere. It was like trying to chew on a strip of cardboard. The fish and chips tasted like they were freezer burnt and they needed to be cooked for at least two minutes longer. And the coleslaw had romaine lettuce in it. For $26, I would have rather waited and gone to McDonald's. At least the fries would have been good. Also, the server never came to check on us and the restaurant wasn't even busy. From now on, we'll just go to Krusty Burger. I've never chewed on cardboard, so I can't relate there. But Erica, if you're watching, you're not, but if you're watching, you are going to hate what's coming up in about five minutes in this video. But anyways, let's go get some fish and chips. My absolute favorite thing about Lombards is the fish tank. I have like a weird fascination with fish tanks. I've always wanted one and I've never, I've never had one. I had like a beta fish at one point, but it was like a small, like in a small bowl. Um, yeah, I, I, I've just always wanted like a big fish tank, but my parents said no. So I just got my fix at like the dentist office or the doctor's office, I just sit there and look at the fish. And also I made a little friend, I was in recording and he swam right up and he was like making eye contact with, I was gonna say me, but probably the camera. I, but still, I, like I like to pretend that He's my friend. Also, I was shocked when I was looking at the reviews to not see anybody talking about the bread and butter they used to bring you. They might still bring you bread. They haven't yet. I'll check back in if they had, but they used to have butter and they were shaped like the universal globe. They said like universal on them. I'll see if I can find a picture and I'll put it in like here. Uh, but yeah, I, I miss, I miss the universal butter. You know how it is. Like, did it taste any different? No, it was just normal, normal butter, but it's kind of like chicken nuggets. Like chicken nuggets are delicious, but chicken nuggets shaped like dinosaurs, like dino nuggies, they taste better. Okay, so I tried to order the $47 bone-in ribeye. They have a New York strip, but not a ribeye. So I just got the fisherman's basket and it actually just showed up and it looks great. Smells delicious. I honestly don't know which ones are the scallops? That's a lemon. So I pulled out all the sea scallops, at least I think. There's 12. The fish is good. I think I like the three broomsticks and leaky cauldrons fish better. I think they both got fish. One of them definitely has fish. Everything has been so good so far, even the fish was delicious. Uh, I'm going to finish eating all the seafood and then I'll come back with that fry count. Final verdict, 64. There were 64 fries. On my way home, I think I'm gonna get a large fry from McDonald's and count them. This is my new thing. I think it'll stick. I just had to say, not only has the food been good, but the service has been incredible. The team members at Universal go above and beyond. They've always got a smile on their face and it is just like one of the best parts about coming to Universal. Like the service is always fantastic. And this is what it looks like when you think you're recording audio, but you're not. It rained again. I got trapped for like two hours while it just downpoured and now I'm wet and the sun's back out and it is hotter than ever. Also, hey Erica, look where I'm at. Krusty Burger. Erica said she would rather go to Krusty Burger than Lombard's, but looking at the reviews, Krusty Burger is significantly lower rated than Lombard's, but it's still not the lowest rated restaurant here at Universal Studios. Uh, I'm saving that one for last. I guess just to buy some time. However, this place right here has some really, really, really concerning reviews. 
Our first review is from Jasmine. Jasmine said, yuck, yuck, double yuck. $70 for lukewarm water, hot dogs, and nacho cheeseburgers. Yuck. That's like five yucks in one review. Brandon said, are you in the mood for a remarkably unremarkable burger? Well, this is the place. Imagine, if you will, a burger not unlike your childhood cafeteria, just a little larger and $7 more. Now, those tater tots, they were cold and also very unremarkable. I'd go for curly fries if I were you. Meh. Nicholas said, I would rather eat my own shoe than eat the terrible food here. Plus, my shoe is readily available, unlike the food. Took about an hour to get our food. Staff was friendly though. You gotta love when people like package up a bad review with something nice. It's kind of like the, oh, you have a uniquely attractive look comment, but a food review. Cody kept it really plain and simple with his review. He said, ooh, not lit. <laughs> uh, uh, I love reviews. And perhaps the most concerning review is from our friend IBZ12Win. They said, zero stars, food poisoning. No, seriously, I got a crusty burger for lunch and had a very bad case of food poisoning. Perhaps it was the bolt gray burger in a silver pan or the processed cheese sauce or the dirty counter in workstation, or even the annoyed worker? Special sauce? I don't know, but I will never have it again. And I warn everyone else to steer clear. I'm still not okay. Expect what you would imagine from the show. Low quality, overpriced, dirty. And you'll probably get food poisoning too. Uh, I have actually never had food poisoning. I've heard it's awful, but today is a day of first, so I'm excited about the possibility. I'm actually not, like, I, I really, I really don't want food poisoning. So the only table that was available was right by the window and it is so bright, like this table is so reflective and it is just blinding. I can seriously feel my face burning from the light reflecting off the table. So I got the Krusty Burger and it came with curly fries. Uh, I didn't see tater tots up there. I was about to eat one of these, but y'all know the rules. Essentially, all a Krusty Burger is, is like the special sauce, which she she even said it was like Big Mac sauce. Um, lettuce, tomato, I forgot what those vegetables were called. Uh, a burger patty and uh, nacho cheese. That's a Krusty Burger. The best news is it's not bad. Um, and I, I don't taste food poisoning, so that's a positive. Definitely, definitely better than a shoe, but it is time to answer the most important question. Twenty-six is the answer. That's how many fries I got. They're curly fries, so I, I think that's pretty good. Also, I got the longest fry I think I've ever seen in my life. It's like three feet long if I uncurled it. Krusty Burger. Most likely to have very, very reflective and shiny tables. And we have arrived. Uh, I am at Richter's Burger Company. I just call it Richter's. This is by far the worst rated restaurant at Universal Studios Florida. And it's a 3.3 on Google and you may be like, oh, that's not that bad. Yeah, but the next closest thing is a 3.8. Like all the other restaurants I ate at today were 3.8. And this one's 3.3 with 2.1K reviews. That's fairly low. I have a general rule. If a restaurant is under 3.5, I don't go. But here we are. Let's start off with Wellington. Wellington said, dry burger and it tastes like nothing. We don't like burgers. Probably not the best place to come if you just don't like burgers. Nathaniel says, it's the worst burger we've ever had. Couldn't even eat it. Service was fast and super friendly. Just wish the food was at least edible. Maybe it's just cause I look like me the way that I do, but I have never, at least to my knowledge, met a burger that I just couldn't eat. Okay, so most of the time, reviews are, you know, just, about the bad experience and they don't give insight on what truly makes a great burger. However, this next one, 
We should all appreciate it. Charles very graciously put, I have spent years improving my skill at making burgers at home, choosing the right lean to fat ratio, 85%, duh. Spices, adding a good acid, Thai fish oil, surprisingly, and getting the right crust on the griddle or cast iron. This place does the opposite of every single tip I've ever learned and then charges you double market price for it. We found Gordon Ramsay's burner, but honestly, Charles, if you have a restaurant somewhere, uh, your burgers sound incredible and I would really like to come try one, so let me know. Amanda has me really excited to go into Richter's. Amanda said, it's like the fire-breathing dragon cooked the burger. Four burgers and fries with drinks, $85. I've never had a bad burger anywhere until today. Don't do it. Driest burger and bun ever. No seasoning. Had to drench in ketchup, mustard, and mayo to make palatable. Disney does food better. This was bad. I'd never recommend even if you are starving. Amanda, I don't know what you're talking about, and I don't know about you guys, but a dragon cooking my burger sounds amazing. Universal's opening up a new theme park called Epic Universe, and they have a whole land dedicated to how to train your dragon, and I really hope that they trained some dragons to cook burgers over there. If there's a restaurant at Epic where dragons are actually cooking your burgers, I will be there every single day. I was going to read a couple more, but Amanda has me so giddy about finding out whether there's actually a dragon inside Richter's that I've got to go right now. I'm up here in the loft by myself and I love it up here. Uh, the restaurant got really busy. Like there for a little bit, I was the only person in here, but now there's, there's people everywhere. The music is also very, very loud. So I'm a little afraid of copyright, but that's okay. Okay, we're gonna start with the good slash bad news, I guess, depending on where you stand. It's terrible news for me. So when Amanda said that there were dragons cooking the burgers, I got really excited. I love dragons. I really wanted to see a dragon today, but there's just a stove. Like that's all that was in here. So if you don't like dragons cooking your burgers, it's good news for you, but I was disappointed. So I got the big one burger. Uh, I don't know if it'll focus. Yeah, I'll get a better shot of it so you can see it better. But everything in here, like everything on the menu and all of that is like a play off of earthquake turns. Like there's the San Andreas, like chicken sandwich, the big one. Uh, there used to be an attraction here at Universal called Earthquake. I think it shut down in like 2007 was the last time that it was here. And then it became like disaster. And now it's a disaster because it's fast and furious. But regardless, I love the theming in this restaurant. It is just like, it's so good. I, I really hope that while I'm here, an earthquake happens. Like, not really, it would be kind of meta, but they have like a little thing, like with Mr. Richter. I think that's Mr. Richter, uh, where an earthquake, like there's like a big celebration. I don't really know what to call it buzzers go off you know he opens his mouth really wide I sound crazy but if I get to show you you'll understand is that a targeted ad before I dive in I did notice something I got a lot of burgers in this video like three do people just not like theme park burgers I'm about to say something a little controversial. I think this is the best burger I've had all video. Now, granted, it does have bacon on it and none of the other ones have had bacon, so the results could be skewed, but I don't think it's dry at all. Definitely doesn't taste like a dragon cooked it. I wish, I really, really wish. I, I'm gonna be salty at Amanda for getting my hopes up for a while. Very reminiscent of the hamburgers you used to get like when you played Little League Baseball, you know, the ones that you'd get in the aluminum foil, you would scarf them down, shove your mouth full of like big league chew, go run some bases and somehow feel just fine. Like you go home and sleep and you were okay. But we all know the most important thing when it comes to judging these restaurants and giving a great review. 31 French fries. Richter's, most likely to aftershock you with the quality of food.
All right, guys. I know I just finished reviewing all the worst restaurants in Universal Studios, and it just kind of goes to show you that sometimes places just have a bad day. Like, you can have a bad experience anywhere, uh, even if the restaurant's actually pretty good, but that's not how we're going to end this video. There is only one way that I feel it is appropriate to end today's video. Hi, can I get a large fry, please? Okay. 71. That's how many fries are in a large McDonald's French fry. If you want to check out another video, you should check out this video right up here. YouTube thinks you will enjoy it. Uh, and always remember, 50 French fries is a lot. <laughs>